Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology and in this video tutorial we are going to talk about miRNA, microRNA. Remember we have talked about the siRNA earlier, so this will be about microRNA and where microRNA is different from, from the siRNA, so let us talk about that. So the first thing is what is miRNA? miRNA or microRNA is a small non-coding RNA molecule found in plants, animals and some viruses that functions in RNA silencing and post-transcriptional regulation of gene expression. The miRNAs function via base pairing with complementary sequences within mRNA molecule and destroying the target mRNA molecule. So, if miRNA is activated, then it can degrade any target mRNA in our cell, right. So, this is the definition taken from Wikipedia. So, the idea about miRNA is that any time inside of the cell, if we have a double standard RNA generated, that is an alarming signal. Double standard RNA can be converted into siRNA, it can also be converted into miRNA. And whenever siRNA or miRNA is formed, it will ultimately cause the degradation of target mRNA. And when it degrades the target mRNA, then the protein synthesis from that target mRNA will not be possible. And that is the role of the RNA mediated gene silencing, okay, or RNA silencing. So, what this miRNA do? Only one answer degrades the target mRNA. This is the answer. It is degrading the target mRNA, thus preventing the translation from that target mRNA. So, now where do they come from? Where do this siRNA, uh, miRNA come from? Sorry, we are talking about miRNA here. So, where do this miRNA come from? They have endogenous origin. So, that means miRNA most of the time is produced from the self cell. The cell itself produces miRNA and as it produces miRNA, the miRNA is capable of degrading its own target mRNAs. So, it is kind of a self-destruction process, but it is mostly endogenous in origin. They are generated in the nucleus. A feature is that they are generated by RNA polymerase 2 or polymerase 3 after post-transcriptional modification. And uh, most of this miRNA produced from introns or non-coding element of the eukaryotic gene or eukaryotic chromosome not from the exons, very rarely from the exons, mostly they are produced from the introns only and they are regulated by their own promoters. So, so these are all uh, the location, localization and sometimes they are transcribed as a long transcript and they need to cleave into smaller fragments and then they are used as a microRNA to degrade our target mRNA. Now, let us talk about some of the properties of mRNA. Primary mode of action is the mRNA cleavage, secondary mode of action is chromatin silencing, encoded by the genes in the nucleus, yes, uh, encoded by the genes in the nucleus, matched in RNA source, uh, the match is not 100 percent always, so near about match, not exactly, no, synthesis endogenous or exogenous, but mostly endogenous in origin, phylogenetically conserved, yes or no. Uh, yes, it is conserved. There are many things wrong about this particular statement actually. The synthesis enzyme RNA polymerase 2, Drosha, Dicer. These are the enzymes which are actually used for the synthesis of miRNA. Precursor stage is present in the nucleus and rest of the stage is done in the cytosol. Length 19 to 24 base pair in length. And the use is that we can use miRNA uh, as potential use in cancer diagnosis, cancer uh, prognostic significance and also you can use it for the drug delivery research. So, these are kind of uh, the important features of miRNA. We also use miRNA in order to find out the function of a protein inside of the cell or function of a gene inside of the cell. By preventing the uh, degra or by degrading the target mRNA, we can check whether what kind of function that mRNA plays inside the cell. So, what is the localization of miRNA? So, there are two stages of miRNA modification and miRNA mediated pathway. One step uh, of localization is done in the nucleus and the rest is done in the cytosol. So, what happens in the nucleus is that it start with primary miRNA, pri miRNA. So, this is not a complete or fully formed miRNA. So, it is endogenous origin. So, normally long stretch of RNA single standard RNA is produced and if a long stretch of single standard RNA is produced and they have a lots of uh, self complementary, self complementary self complementary regions they can easily bind with themselves and what they can form is this hairpin structure okay loop like structure and if they form this kind of structure then what they need to do this pri miRNA is converted to pre miRNA by the enzyme drosha okay 
Drosha, example DGCR8, Drosha enzyme is present inside the nucleus and the job of Drosha enzyme is to, is to cleave. You know, you can see this is a total full length. This is the 5 prime. This is the full length RNA. They have complementary regions. So, they pair in the complementary region. Not 100 percent complementary. Something 60 to 70 percent complementary is enough in order to form this kind of structure. And Drosha cleaves them from middle somewhere, from the, st from the stem somewhere because the stem loop structure. So, Drosha enzymes, endonuclease endo cleave from some stem. And we have now a SH kind of RNA short hairpin RNA and then we can use this RNA for the further processing. We call it pre-MIRNA. So, pre-MIRNA means is a long stretch of RNA before the use of Drosha enzyme. After the Drosha enzyme does its job, then pre-MIRNA is converted to pre-MIRNA. Then this pre-MIRNA is transported into the cytoplasm via special export receptors present in the nuclear envelope in the nuclear mem uh, membrane is known as exporting 5 through this receptor pre mirna is transported to the cytoplasm and then dicer enzyme is used remember the dicer enzyme is present in the cytosol which is normally present during the siRNA mediated pathway as well dicer cleaves this this loop portion out of it so now we have only double stranded uh, mi rna kind of structure here double stranded rna we call it MIR, MIR star duplex, it also has 3 prime overhang, the same kind of structure. So, this MIR, MIR star duplex, now the finally assembly of argonaut protein and other proteins together to form risk, RNA induced silencing complex and when they form risk, they, they remove one of the strand and take the one single strand and use that strand along with the argonaut protein to load itself to the target mRNA. And Whenever they bind complementary to the target mRNA, the argonaut protein will cleave the target mRNA in a specific region and that is how the mRNA will be degraded, that is how the mRNA will be destroyed. So, these are the stages of mRNA mediated degradation, mRNA mediated gene silencing, mRNA mediated mRNA, uh, mRNA mediated mRNA degradation. So, in this process, one enzyme extra is needed inside the nucleus that, that is Drosha. So, remember Drosha is used in miRNA mediated pathway, not used in siRNA. The only big difference between miRNA and siRNA is that in miRNA, it is endogenous in origin and they use Drosha. In siRNA, exogenous in origin mostly and they utilize only dicer, no Drosha. So, what happens in miRNA? So, everything starts with uh, the microRNA gene in the DNA. So, it is a DNA. We start with DNA in case of, in case of miRNA pathway, but in case of siRNA pathway, you always start with double standard RNA or a hairpin RNA. Okay. So, in miRNA mechanism, we start with double, uh, we start with DNA. Transcription is done, RNA is formed. It has self complementary bases. So, as a result, it forms pri miRNA complex 5 prime, this is 3 prime. Now, inside the nucleus, what happens? Prosha is cleaving along with the DGCR8, it is cleaving the 5 prime end and the 3 prime end portion of the rest of the long RNA structure, keeping only the hairpin, only hairpin uh, loop structure, keeping only the hairpin loop structure here. And we use this hairpin loop uh, structure of the pre miRNA through uh, and we transport it through the membrane of a nucleus. This is known as X protein receptor, X protein 5 receptor, XOP5. Through this X protein 5 receptor, the pre miRNA is transported into the cytoplasm and in the cytoplasm dicer enzyme is used to cleave the loop. Remember the loop cleavage is done by the dicer, loop cleavage is not done by the drosha. Drosha cleaves only the rest of the stem structures from some point of the stem. Okay? But dicer in the cytosol will cleave the loop and then uh, they form the risk means particularly you know, after cleaving the loop we have miRNA duplex call it MIR, MIR star duplex and then it associates itself with the argonaut protein type 1, 2, 3, 4 along with the other proteins it will form mature miRNA which has argonaut protein as a endonuclease and it has a target uh, miRNA single stranded miRNA with which it will bind with the target mRNA and with the help of this argonaut protein it can degrade the target mRNA into two different fragments and they have multiple this uh, risk complexes that can degrade in different uh, multiple locations of the target mRNA. So, if the mRNA is big enough, it can cleave in different locations. Okay? It is not like a single specific location, but it can cleave in any multiple locations. This is the overall mechanism of mRNA mediated 
gene degradation, mRNA degradation. So, what is the role of mRNA in cancer or what is the molecular regulation behind mRNA? See, uh, the normal situa situation is that the, the RNA is formed from the DNA. The RNA has self complementary basis with which it forms a stem loop structure, uses drosha to cleave somewhere from the stem and then it is transported into the cytosol. And at this particular point, see, remember drosha and DGCR8 is doing the job of stem loop cleave, cleavage. So, without this uh, process, the mRNA activation is not done. So, uh, what is done here is that wild type P53 actually influence the drosha and DGCR8 to activate the mRNA because the job of P53 is that to ultimately kill the cell if the cell has some, so some sort of deformity or DNA damage or anything else. So, that is why we call the P53 as a tumor suppressor gene. So, if there is normal wild type P53 gene and there is DNA damage uh, suspe uh, suspected, then this P53 will be activated, P53 will recruit the drosha and DGCR8 to cleave uh, somewhere from the stem so that the pre-miRNA is formed and pre-miRNA is transported to the cytosol, uh, Dicer will cut the loop open, uh, the MIR, MIR star duplex will form and then they will go and can form the risk and can destroy the target mRNA. But if the P53 is mutated, then the mutated form of P53 will not activate drosha. It will inhibit drosha and DGCR8. As a result of which, nobody will be there to activate pre-miRNA. And as a result of which, as a result of which, there won't be any activation of miRNA and no degradation of the mRNA, no degradation of the cell, no killing of the cell. So this is how the P53 is actually regulating the miRNA mediated mRNA degradation. Okay. And as we know, miRNA is mostly uh, of an endogenous origin, gene expression machineries like transcription, chromatin remodeling, 5' prime capping, splicing, all these things have a crosstalk with the pre-miRNA cleavage by Drosha and the P53 can regulate the activation of miRNA complex or miRNA mediated risk complex or not. Okay. So, depending upon the situation, uh, the P53 will do the, their, uh, its job. So, this is kind of the overall idea about the miRNA. And remember about the risk and argonaut protein, we will see what risk and what argonaut protein really is. Now, what is this risk that we are talking about till now? Remember I told you the risk complex actually consists of this uh, two strand of siRNA. It contains argonaut protein known as AgO2 here, another protein, the accessory protein known as TRBP and dicer sometimes is involved. But uh, dicer's work is done uh, even before the idea of risk. So, you can say argonaut or AGO2, TRBP altogether they form what is known as a risk complex. So, risk is a large RNA multiprotein complex which triggers the mRNA degradation in response to siRNA and why we call it large because it has a 500 kilo Dalton of weight. Okay? So, RNA and multiprotein complex together. Unwinding of double stranded siRNA is done by ATP independent helicase. So, here the helicase is used but ATP independent. But remember I told you some example where ATP is required. In that case, uh, the risk loading is re, uh, where the ATP can be required. The third thing is the active component of risk are endonucleases called argonaut protein which cleaves the target mRNA strand. And in this case, we are not uh, requiring any ATP. So, see argonaut protein is also an endonuclease enzyme the job of which is to cleave the phosphodiester bond of the mRNA, the target mRNA that can destroy the mRNA. Thus, it will inhibit the chance of producing any target protein inside of the cell. So, this is the structure of the risk, okay? more than 500 kilo Dalton in molecular weight. Now, about the argonaut protein, which is the integral part of the risk and playing the vital role of destroying the phosphodiester bond on destroying the target mRNA. So, argonaut protein looks something like this. Okay? It has two domains, PAS domain and PUE domain. Okay? Now, uh, what is the function of PAS domain? Only in argonaut and dicer families binds to the nucleic acids, recognizes the 3' prime overhang of single stranded RNA. This is very, very important because we know the job of argonaut is to bind with the double stranded siRNA and it has a job of separating the two strands from each other and taking only one strand and interact that one strand with the target mRNA to cleave the target mRNA. So, the PAS domain is there uh, for the proper recognition of the target uh, mRNA, I mean, I mean uh, for the proper recognition of the 3' overhangs and also uh, 
to separate the RNA, double stranded RNA from each other to form a single stranded RNA. And what is the function of PV domain? PV means P element induced WIMP testis. So, this is the full form. Only in argonaut AGO is found and PV proteins are core fold resembles the RNA's H structure. It has a catalytic motif that can actually destroy the phosphodiester bond, cleave the target mRNA. So, the destruction or endonuclease activity is actually present in PV domain, but PAS domain is actually involved. Full form is PV argonaut zeal. Okay, this is known as full form of PAS. PAS's job uh, is to bind to the nucleic acid, recognize the three prime end of single stranded RNA. PV's job uh, as a RNA's H activity to cleave the phosphodiester backbone to cleave the target mRNA in a specific location. That is the idea of argonaut protein. So that's why argonaut protein plays a key role in forming risk or RNA induced silencing complex. So that in a sense is an overall idea about how SI RNA mediated gene silencing is done. SI RNA can be endogenous or exogenous in origin, mostly exogenous in origin 21 to 23 nucleotide long and it requires ATP in two different stages and with the help of argonaut as well as other protein complexes, it can target, it can bind with a single stranded RNA with the mRNA target, destroy the mRNA with the help of the PV domain. This is the overall idea about the RNAi or SI RNA short interfering RNA mediated gene silencing or protein synthesis silencing mechanism. So that's all about it. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we upload a new video. Thank you.